to plot points and, and identify a line of best fit. Okay? When you are plotting your points, so you're simply taking the information that's provided here and then setting them up uh, basically as a set of coordinates, an X and Y coordinate, as in the case of this first example. So we're just going to use the left column for Xs, the inputs, the right column for Ys. And so 10, 8 would be our first point. Now, as you plot your points, you're going to select the point tool on your graph. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There's a tolerance level that, that should allow you uh, a few points, like plus or minus a few. And don't be way off. But if, if you're somewhat close, uh, there should be no issue here. This, I mean, this isn't something that's uh, like incredibly difficult. So the idea is you should be pretty close. So here, if we go 13, 9, again, just plot a point similar, like close to where that would be, 25, 25. Uh, 32, 27. So again, I'm, I'm going to be close here. Uh, uh, when you're doing this uh, on there, you'll see, again, be somewhat close. Uh, 37, 29. Uh, 38, 33. Uh, 39, 38. Uh, 48, 47. Bless you. All right, so this would be approximately where I would plot the points. The next thing it says is, is here, plot the points and sketch a line of best fit. It's the same holds true here. When you choose your line, so then you're going to draw a line tool, okay, and you're just going to place it somewhere where there's approximately the same number of points above and below the line, approximately the same distance from the line, right? Where we talked about standard deviation or dispersion. And you want it to be sort of as minimal as possible. Okay, so when you sketch it, uh, again, something like this, you see there's like three or four points below. There's uh, four points above. Again, it's not perfect, but it's uh, within the range. And there's a larger tolerance level of mistakes on this one. But it's just a matter of like understanding. Like once you plot points, you can place a line of best fit. And now most of the time with the, the uh, technology that you guys have access to, including Desmos, um, you will actually be able to plot the real line for it. Okay? Um, but this is just giving, getting an estimate. Uh, you don't have to type this into Desmos and uh, come up with the line of best fit. Uh, you can just estimate it. Okay? The other thing uh, to think about, too, is um, the difference between two terms, interpolation versus extrapolation. Okay, and the verbs are interpolate and extrapolate. When you are doing those two processes, okay, both of them require you to make a prediction. Okay, and it all determines like where is the prediction that you want to make uh, with regard to the uh, highest and lowest values. Okay, so when you look at sort of this range of, of values right here, okay, if you're being asked to make a prediction that falls uh, within that range, it, that's what the prefix inter means is within. Okay, and so you're making a prediction within the range of, of the inputs. Okay, so if you're being asked to estimate a value uh, in 2003, notice 2003 falls between 1997 and 2015. So that's called interpolation. If it happens in here, it's being interpolation or interpolated. Okay, extra is the prefix that means outside of. Okay, and so if you're being asked to make a prediction that falls outside, the range of the input values that were used to construct the, the um, line of best fit. Then it's called extrapolating. Okay, so extrapolating happens all the way pre-1997 and everything after 2015. So you're extrapolating here and here uh, when you're looking at these uh, uh, dates. 
Okay, so when you're being asked here in 2018, 2018 falls outside of the, the range of values that were used to create um, the uh, line of best fit. Okay? So that's all those mean on um, this question is just an example of that. So 2003 is interpolate, 2018 is extrapolate, and it's just a drop down where you're choosing between those two. Okay. All right. The rest of what you're being asked to do here is uh, going to involve using the um, Desmos calculator okay, to create your uh, lines of best fit. Okay, and uh, when we talked about those before, we've dealt with linear regression. Okay, once again, on Desmos, what you're going to do is you're going to select the plus tool and choose table. So, oops. All right, so we go up to this uh, plus tool, select table, and then we just uh, enter our inputs, okay, so, or our input output. So 18, 33, um, 30 and 33, 33 and 32, again, just input what we have, 36 and 26, and then finally, 40 and 11. All right, so it's going to specifically tell you um, what type of regression to run. Okay? So what we're looking at right here is for linear regression. We're going to uh, add the table. Once we create all of our data uh, in this table, we're then going to use the commands y1. Remember, y sub 1 is similar to. And we can just use the, um, the equation of a linear, uh, the, point, the slope intercept form, mx1 plus b. Okay, so uh, we type y1 is similar to m times x1 plus b. If you don't put the x1 and y1, it's not going to refer to the data in these cells up here. So you do need to have that. Uh, and once you do, uh, it allows you oops, to uh, find your equation. And so what we see right here is our slope is negative uh, 0.7987, which if we go uh, to two decimal places, we get uh, negative 0.80x plus our y value is 52.08 if we round to the nearest two decimal places. Okay, and so this would be the equation that we would use uh, for this problem. All right, I want you to uh, try doing the same thing here uh, with this second problem, please. Now, I'm going to recreate my, my table and my, uh, my equation every time uh, just because I'm showing you how it's done. But obviously, if I'm doing, multiple, if I'm doing this assignment right here, I'm not erasing my equations. I'm just, you can deactivate it, like you can hide them or you can move them around. But uh, if you're using um, several different ones, I just store it on the side and keep it until you're done with all the linear forms and then done with all the quadratic forms and so on. So in this next one, again, if I just uh, go into the uh, plus, choose table, and I'm just going to pick my values. Now, I see that my x's are all really, they're in that consistent consecutive numbers. So I'm just going to just type those first, 1 through 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 makes it easier. And then I'm going to go back and type the, re the remaining uh, outputs. So 562, 539, 560, 565. 582 and uh, 552. All right. So once I have all of those done, I'm then going to type my regression equation, which on Desmos is y sub 1. And you don't have to put any subscript. It just If you type y1, it'll automatically subscript that, similar to. Uh, if you don't have a keyboard with you, you can go into this uh, 
keypad uh, marker, and if you hit this ABC, it'll give you access to that similar to symbol to use for that. Okay, and then again, it's a linear form that tells you right here um, the linear function that fits this. So mx1 plus b, and when you do that, you can see your slope and your y-intercept. So we get the equation uh, y is equal to uh, 2.4x plus, plus our b value of 551.6. Okay, and so this would be our equation. Now, if they wanted you to um, find what uh, y of, let's say, 17 is equal to, okay, if they do ask you to evaluate, that would be your next step. And you can evaluate using, now, uh, if you are uh, setting this up, um, what you can do uh, is you might need to use function notation for that. Okay, because here, if, uh, if you are setting this up and you want to evaluate why or when x is 17, you can either plug that into your equation and type it out, okay, or if you uh, take your function and just define it as what we've defined it as. So if we, if we type right here, f of x is equal to m times x plus b, right? what we can then do is we can evaluate f of 17, right? because that's what I'm being asked to test right here. And it will automatically plug that in everywhere that x appears for a linear function that's not as like useful, because you can easily just uh, type that in for the x. But it, for some of the other functions where you're like entering multiple x's, you can use this function notation to simplify that. And so we would get uh, 592.4 as our answer uh, for if we were asked to evaluate that. Now, would that be interpolation or extrapolation? We're defining our equation from w using values 1 to 6, but we're evaluating 17. That falls outside the, that range of, of inputs. So this would be extrapolation if it would ask you that question. Okay. All right, so that is linear regression. Um, any questions on that? We've, we've done it. Uh, I think we've done this before. So uh, that should be something that uh, is uh, somewhat familiar that you've seen previously. Bless you. All right, what happens if we're dealing with a quadratic function? Right, if we have a quadratic function, there's three different forms that you can possibly uh, use when you uh, perform the regression. Okay? Uh, you're still going to kind of follow the same st set of rules. You're going to enter your data. Okay? And that's what we did when we went to add table, enter all of that. Okay? And then you're going to type in one of the following. More than likely, you're just going to use the general form. So y1 is similar to ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c. Uh, probably the most common mistake is going to be to forget the ones, the subscripts. And just if, if nothing shows up, it's probably because you forgot to put a subscript on an x somewhere in your problem. But you can also do this using vertex form. So uh, if you wanted to, you could say a times the quantity x1 minus h squared plus k. Remember where h and k is the um, coordinates of your vertex? It will give you those different variables. It, it understands that. You can also put it into uh, intercept form. And you can find the factors by taking uh, uh, y1 is similar to a times x1 minus p times x1 minus q. So all three of these uh, forms will give you the equations. Okay, now, as I mentioned before, uh, if you need to evaluate if necessary, using function notation. You can do the same thing if you wanted to. Okay? But uh, for this, um, what you're looking to do is uh, pick any of the forms. It doesn't matter. Probably the first one will generally, the general form will usually be uh, OK. That's, that's really probably all you need to do. And okay, so let's take a look at this really quickly, and then I'll have you do the second one. So 
uh, add table, we're going to put our uh, first set of values. So right here, um, it, even though it's not uh, consecutive numbers, it's going to be easy for me just to enter 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 14. And then I'm going to go over and enter the corresponding uh, values. So 96.6, 113.4, uh, 120.4, 82.6, negative 43.4, and uh, negative 449.4. So there's my data. I've entered it. It tells me here specifically using quadratic regression. So now I know. When I type my equation uh, for the regression, y1 is similar to, and I'm just going to use this first uh, form here, this general form. Unless it specifically tells you a way to write it, any of these forms would be acceptable. Okay, so if I say a x1, notice the, x, the 1 after the x will automatically subscript for me, but I do need to square that value. And then uh, plus b x1 plus c. And when I do that, notice I get my values for A, B, and C down here. And that gives me my equation of negative uh, 4.9x squared uh, plus B, which is 31.5x, plus my C value, which is 70. And so there is my equation. Okay. So notice here, uh, I want to make a, a prediction on um, what would be the estimated profit if you sold five items. And so, uh, once again, it, it depends on how you want to do this. Okay, so if I want to uh, evaluate my function, my function is equal to, oh, that's, um, I just want to use the A, B, and C. I don't need to type the numbers in. The numbers are already there. So I can just type AX squared plus BX plus C. So notice here I'm not using the subscript 1 anymore because now my input is uh, x itself. And so if I evaluate f of 5, it gives me my answer, which is going to be 105. And that would be the, the two answers for this. Now, would that uh, example be interpolation or extrapolation? Five falls within the set or within the domain of, of the inputs. Okay? And so uh, that means that we're looking at interpolation uh, for that value. All right, so uh, try the problem to the right here on your own, please, and see if you can find uh, that information. All right, actually, let me add one more thing because um, this is going to, this wasn't on the, the original, but it's going to be part of the question that you see, is going to say uh, using the years since, and it'll give you some value. Okay, and so what this means is um, if you see something like this, it means to, uh, Let 2010 be represented as x equals 0. Okay, so instead of uh, writing an uh, ordered pair as 2010 comma negative 7, uh, if it asks you to be, to be using the year since some set number, uh, you're just going to go back and base all of your inputs, your uh, domain, uh, based on that. So in 2010, that is, corresponds to an input of 0. So we get 0, negative 7, and then from there, each of those increase by 1. So 1, negative 1, all the way to 8, 59. So uh, make sure uh, if, it, if it has that uh, on it, don't use the given numbers. Uh, you may need to uh, rewrite them uh, in terms of uh, setting a specific year to time equals 0. So if you are uh, looking to follow 
enter your data, create a table. Okay, I see that my x's are going from 0 to 8, right? Because we're letting 2010 be 0. So I'm just going to enter those first. Again, a lot of cells. And then just enter the corresponding output. So negative 7, negative 1, 3, 7, 15, 17, 31, 49, and 59. Okay, so there's all my uh, entries. I can now uh, access the regression. It specifically tells me here, use quadratic regression. So I'm going to set my equation similar to, I'm going to use general form, so AX1 squared plus BX1 plus C. Okay, and when I do that, I get my, I can again, I, and I can see the sketch of my graph of this line, there, this graph of best fit. And so I see my answers here. Uh, notice when it asks me to round all values to two decimal places. Okay, so I get uh, 0.88x squared um, plus 0.97x and then minus 4.558. And so that would be my equation for the line of best fit. All right, the final step on this one here um, is where the, you might need to be like a little careful. Um, I, I, I'm not 100% certain uh, which way the, the question is set up. I didn't write all of the questions that we're using. Okay? But um, if, if I set up the question, more than likely I, I would instruct you in this final step to evaluate using the equation from the previous step. And so more than likely on something like this, what I would do is tell you, uh, like, estimate the value in 2024 using the equation from the previous step or from the pre previous answer field. And if that was the case, since this, uh, or I guess it's f of x anyway, so I'll just redefine our f of x is equal to, I would use 0.88x squared plus 0.97x or minus 4.58. So if it specifically tells you to use that, what you can then do is evaluate. Now, 2024 is what in terms of what we're doing right now? If 2010 is 0, 2024 is 14, right? So be careful with that. That would be, again, the next like make common mistake to make sure you avoid. Okay, and so what I get is 181. 0.48 as my answer. Okay. All right. So uh, for the most part, like if you are going to be estimating, um, use the the equation that you've entered uh, for your um, equation of best fit because again, it's an approximation anyway. Uh, use the one that you write in that answer field. All right. So. Uh, did we do, we did quadratic regression on the SAT questions, is that correct? Have I talked through that with you guys already? Did we do linear regression already? Or is this the first time we've done that? So either first time or, okay. All right, so there's two other types of equations uh, that we're gonna look at right here. Okay. Um, one is called power regression. Okay, so if we take a power function, a power function looks like this. Okay, if we, if, oops, if you remember when we were, that's a B there. If uh, you remember when we were talking about polynomial functions, a power function has no uh, shifting on it. It's just uh, A times X to some power, some integer power B, or some, uh, the power B. It doesn't have to be an integer. It can be any real number there. And so uh, the same holds true. This is the form that we're going to enter everything. Enter your data by adding the table. And then you're going to use the regression equation A times X1 to the B. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we do this. 
Okay, so if we add table and we enter our values, so notice we go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going from 7 to 12. I'm going to go ahead and enter the inputs first and then enter the corresponding outputs. Right, so I've entered my data, and now I'm going to call on my regression, since this is uh, said to be a power function, is what I want to find. I'm going to take y1 is similar to a times the base now is x, and the power is some unknown b. Now, notice here, as I started to type this, I mentioned to you, nothing showed up. So what's my clue? If, if, I, if, something, if I typed it in and nothing shows up, what's the most common mistake? What I forget? Yeah, I left out this subscript one. So come down here. Once I add that subscript, it now uh, gives me my information. Okay, but notice that it gives you this option for log mode. Okay, you need to uh, um, toggle that on. Okay, so select the log mode. And that's going to give you the form that we want. And so when you write your equation for this, your A value is that multiplier out front, uh, which is 17.48. Again, it asks you to, or this time it asks to round to three decimals. So 17.428, uh, oops. If we round it to three decimal places. Okay, and then it's x to the power of, and once again, we take this power to three decimal places, 0.366, and that would be your entry. All right, so try the one on the, on the right on your own for me, please. And once again, make sure you use the model that you find to evaluate uh, and test the number that you're calculating. All right, so I've entered all of the data here. Um, when you are given a problem, so the problems that I have on my, like on these notes, these are PDFs, so you can't really, it's, you're not going to be able to copy and paste. There is a potential that uh, on the questions that you guys are getting on your homework, uh, it's going to be in the actual um, fields of, an ex of a spreadsheet or of a table. You uh, very likely can copy and paste. So it's possible that you might be able to take something like this, hold down the, your cursor, copy it, and then just paste it into this table. No guarantees, okay, but there's a, a possibility that you can do that and save you, one, the time of entering all of this, and then two, the potential mistake that you would make when you enter all of this, okay? So notice here, it's asking you to use power regression. Power regression means that this is what you're entering. Okay, power regression means you take Y1 is similar to some multiplier times the base stays X, but the power is, and again, I, x1, make sure you uh, identify that, and the power is still also a variable, and make sure you select log mode, and that's going to give you your equation. And so here, uh, if we round it to uh, three decimal places again, um, we get uh, our a value to be 8.531 times x to some power, and the power rounded to three decimals. Um, is 0.649. Okay, and notice, it's asking us to evaluate this. If so, if I take h of x, let's say, is equal to 8.531, I'm just typing in the model that I'm using, x to the power of uh, 0.649. I can then go to my next line and evaluate using function notation. It's asking me to evaluate 43. And so there is my number, a 97.976. If I round it, it doesn't specifically say, I guess. Um, I'll just round it to three decimals because that's what the other part of the question asked me. And so that would be my value, my estimate. All right. The final uh, model that we're going to look at 
is exponential regression. We haven't quite gotten there yet, but this is where we're uh, heading here um, in this uh, last, uh, or in this current chapter. And so the same holds true, uh, the same steps. You're going to enter your data okay, by adding the table. And then you're going to test, oops, y1 is similar to. And the regression model uh, for this is going to be um, y1 is similar to some number a times a base. This time your base is your unknown and your power is x. So when you evaluate this, uh, you get uh, A times B to the X1. Okay, so this is the uh, expression you're going to uh, use. And once again, it's going to offer you the option to use log mode. Do that, please. Okay, and so if we look at this example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops. I'll go back. So add our table. And I'll fill in one, two, three, four, five, six, the, the y's or the x's first. And then I'll come back and fill in the corresponding y's. Um, 831, 954, 1129, 1309, 1474, and 1676. Okay, so here is my entry. And then I'm going to call on this. Uh, by taking y1 is similar to a is fine, b to the power of x sub 1. And once I get that, uh, it will allow me to enter my answers. Notice in this particular case, they actually break it down, and they want you to enter your values for each of these separately. Okay. Um, oops, I forgot to hit log mode. Make sure you choose log mode. Notice the numbers are quite a bit different here, right? And the reason for that is that... Um, it's turning the base, or uh, you need to, um, you're assuming that it's this exponential growth, E. Okay, and so um, when we click that log mode, we get the, the values that are the solutions to, uh, it doesn't specifically say, well, let's go three decimals since the other ones have been asking for that. So uh, 7.26909 as our uh, input. Or our A value, and then our B value here is 1.152. And so those would be our answers. All right, so try that last problem here, and then. So again, I'll enter my table, add the table, enter my cells, one, two, three, four, five, six. Once again, the inputs. And then I'll add my outputs, 691, 796, 1002, 1165, 1395, and 1706. Once I enter everything, uh, it's calling on exponential. Okay, so I'm finding my model as a Y1 is similar to some multiplier times my base b to some power x, but I need to uh, call on x1 since I've got my cells set up that way. And so uh, I do want to access this log mode, and that gives me my equation that I'm using, a base of 568.584, uh, all to the power of um, my b value. of uh, 1.199 um, all to the power of uh, x. Okay, and so this would be my equation.